Uh, okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now we're going to start our first uh, video, uh, which is basically uh, a look at uh, some uh, points on the first worksheet. And we're going to start with the first uh, problem, which is uh, basically saying, I think everybody read the problem, but uh, the question is asking, you have a, a ball that has a mass and a charge, and uh, the question it's asking is that it wants you to find the magnitude and the sign of the charge in such a way that the charge is, the charge is suspended uh, at this point here. That means it's at static equilibrium. Now, uh, to solve this problem, we have to go uh, back to our physics one and recall that when an object is at rest, then the sum of the forces is equal to zero. That means the sum of the forces along the x-axis is equal to zero, and the sum of the forces along the y-axis is equal to zero. So uh, if you recall from first, uh, first year physics, we, what we have to do, we have to uh, draw our free body diagram, and then from this free body diagram we can find this. So if you look at this, I have mg down, and then I have the tension going uh, out of the mass, and if I resolve the tension, T, I have uh, an X component and a Y component, and this angle is theta. If this angle is theta, then I have this is T sine theta, and this is T uh, cosine the angle theta. Okay. Then uh, if I have that, then the sum of the forces along Y is equal to uh, T sine theta minus mg is equal to zero, so from here I get T is equal to mg divided by sine theta. I'm going to use this uh, in a few minutes. Okay, So that's uh, the first thing that uh, I do. Now along the x-axis, this is where uh, the, the problem is going to be solved. Along the x-axis, uh, we have one force, which is T sine theta, but what is keeping this uh, charge at rest along the uh, horizontal axis is another force which must be, which must balance this, and this force, it must be due to the uh, electrostatic field. So along the x-axis, I'm going to say that I'm going to have Fc uh, is equal to T sine the angle theta. Okay, Fc is equal to Qe is equal to T sine theta, so that means Q is equal to T sine theta divided by E. T is here, okay, is from here, and sine theta and E are given, E is equal to the magnitude of that is equal to uh, 700 uh, newtons per coulomb, and Q uh, is the magnitude of the charge. Now, the sign of a charge. What is the sign of the charge? The sign of the charge is determined from the direction of the force. Since the direction of the force is opposite to the uh, direction of the field, then the charge, as we have discussed and clarified in class, the charge must be negative. Okay, and that's the solution to the uh, first problem, which is uh, problem number one. Uh, question number two, quickly. What we have, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, four charges. Uh, Q, the magnitude is the same, but except one of them is negative. So this is minus Q, this is Q, this is Q, this is Q, and the question is asking you to find the net force on Q. So the uh, F net on the charge minus Q. That's what he wants you to find. So what does that mean? That means I have to find the force due to this charge, the force due to this charge, and the force due to this charge. These, there are three charges. So I can definitely see that the magnitudes of these forces are the same, except the direction is different. So if, let me call it F1, magnitude is equal to F2, uh, F3, sorry, F3 magnitude is equal to K, Q, Q, or Q squared, divided by b squared, and this is b, this is b. Okay, so the magnitude is the same, except if due to 1 will be this way, and if due to 3 will be this way. Okay, so if 1 will be k, q, q divided by uh, b squared, uh, if due to 1, it will be along the i hat, and if due to 3, it will be k, q squared, b squared, along the j hat up. Okay. All right, so that's F1 and F3. F2, F due to 2, this one, which is basically, it's this force here, right? And I have to resolve it. The magnitude of F, 
F due to a charge 2 will be K Q squared again, the magnitude is equal to Q squared, and then it's B squared 2, because the square root uh, of 2, when you square it, you get B. And that's the magnitude. So I need to find F2X and F2Y. And these will be equal to this cosine 45 and this sine 45. And this is the magnitude that goes in here and here. And this will give you the I hat direction and give you the, hat, the J hat direction. And then you add the I's together, the I hats together, and the J hat components or the horizontal components together and the vertical components uh, together. Okay, so that's question number two. Question number three. Uh, what he gave you, let me quickly read the question here on my laptop. Uh, question number three, he gave you two charges. One of them is negative, one of them is positive, and they're separated by 2p, uh, the dis distance 2b. And then there is another point here which uh, asks you to find the electric field uh, at that point in part b. So the first part, he wants you to find the force between these two charges. It's actually a dipole an electric dipole, it's minus Q and Q, and they're separated by a distance to be. So the, I know that the force uh, on either, if this on this and this on this, will, be, will have the same magnitude, except the direction will be different. If I want the force on this one, it will be down. If I want the force on this one, it will be up. Okay, this way. But their magnitude is the same. F is equal to a K magnitude, a Q squared divided by 2B all squared, and that's it depending on if, if he wants to, uh, you to find the direction of the uh, bottom force there. The sum of these two forces, of course, will be equal to zero because they're opposite direction and equal in magnitude. The second part, he wants you to find the magnitude uh, of the electric field at this point here. So he wants you to find the electric field at point P. Okay. So in order to do that, if you remember from uh, in class, we know that you have to calculate the net electric field is due to uh, or is equal to the sum of the electric field due to charge one plus the electric field due to charge two. Okay, so uh, E one and E two, I have to calculate E at this point due to this charge and E to this one, or I can call them E positive and E negative, positive for this charge and negative for this charge. Now, one thing that you should uh, pay attention to, and I think we uh, talked about this in class quite a bit, is the uh, look to look for symmetry. Now, I want to calculate the electric field here. So for this one, the electric field, remember this is positive, and I place a test charge Q0, which is positive here. That means positive and positive, right? That means they will repel each other, so the force will be this way, okay? And uh, this one is negative, and this one is positive, so they will attract each other. So let me call this is the electric field uh, due to the positive charge, and this is the electric field due to the negative charge. Okay, I remember I reversed these in the book. This is negative and this is positive, but you should get the same answer anyways, except uh, I'm going to get uh, a positive uh, I hat and you're going to get a negative I hat. So this is going to be resolved into an X component and a Y component. E positive, uh, positive X and E due to the positive charge along Y. And same thing this one, E negative along X, and E negative along Y. Now you see that these two will cancel. Why? Because the magnitudes of the electric field in both sides is uh, uh, for both or due to both charges is the same. So the electric field, uh, the electric field due to this charge, or the electric field due to this charge at this point is equal to uh, are equal. And because they're opposite in the direction, so they will cancel. So uh, what I can say is that the sum of the uh, X components of the electric field is equal to zero. Now, the only thing that I have to find is the component of the Y uh, electric field along the Y direction, but I know E1Y, right, is equal to E2Y, okay? It's equal to K, Q, right, over the distance here, uh, the distance which is equal to R square plus B square and it's under the square root, b squared plus r squared, under the square root. When I square it, the square root goes. Okay, so that's that. And then I have to find the y direction for each one of them. That means I have to multiply each one of them by sine the angle theta. And this is the angle theta, or this is the angle theta here. The sine of the angle theta will be equal to what? 
it will be equal to, remember this is theta, so sine theta will be equal to b over the square root of uh, b squared plus r squared. Okay, so uh, then uh, the sum of the uh, electrostatic along y, electrostatic field along y, is equal to 2 kq divided by, uh, sorry, r squared plus b squared and then multiply it by sine theta and sine theta is this when you multiply that you get the electric field. Remember the electric field along the uh, x-axis cancels and the electric field along the y-axis will uh, add up. Okay. So this is the end of the first uh, video which is explaining the th first three questions and we'll, uh, uh, we'll uh, see you in the next uh, video.